I'm Ashley Jones. I'm the Communications Director for the Calhoun County Area Chamber Visitor Center. And this morning, I am joined by Shannon Romano and Michelle Williams with Project Search Calhoun County. And they're just going to give us a brief presentation this morning, kind of about their mission at Project Search and what they have to offer to the community. So, please, I'll let you take it away. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, my name is Shannon Romano. I am the one of the resource specialists at Calhoun County Schools, um, and I am the school representative that oversees Project Search. Uh, Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about your role in the program? Um, I am the skills trainer or job coach. Um, what I do is I'm actually employed by the Opportunity Center but I'm still based out of RMC here. And what I do is teach the interns different jobs and help them with their job skills. And then once they get a job, I'm with them for a year to be sure they are successful and don't have any other issues. Yes, so um, the main reason we wanted to come on today and talk a little bit about our program is because we are always trying to um, find outreach within the community, uh, partner with businesses so that we have more opportunities to make connections, um, more opportunities for our interns to um, possibly find competitive employment that aligns more with their interests and their personal goals. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our students in the program and also um, some outcomes that we've had. We've been around for um, a few years now, since 2017. Um, the different agencies that we work with are the Alabama Department of Rehabilitation. Um, they are the ones that fund our job coaches. So Michelle Williams and Roy um, are, are our job coaches, are our skills instructors. And then Calhoun County Schools funds the classroom instructor. We do have a certified teacher on staff at Project Search. She actually, her classroom is in the hospital um, and the students participate in instruction in the classroom with the teacher uh, at RMC. And then um, the Opportunity Center is uh, where Michelle and Roy work, but RMC is our host site. They are the uh, business that really oversees and allows us to oversees the um, implementation of the program. They provide mentors to our students. So um, the mentors serve as um, kind of trainers, but they're also natural supports like we have in our own jobs. They are the people that our interns rely on when they are learning these job skills um, that they can ask questions to, that can provide feedback and correction to our interns while they are in their job rotations. So there are many agencies that are supporting this one program. Um, so what is it? Project Search is what we call a transition program. It is for students with significant cognitive disabilities. It is housed at Regional Medical Center and it is a one year program. So we have interns or students, I'll use those phrases interchangeably. We have um, students from all over Calhoun County Schools. Once they have met the graduation requirements within their high school, they can apply and interview to come to Project Search. This would give them more specialized instruction and training in the area of employment. Um, I don't want to say we're very selective, but we, you know we are working with students who, yes, have um, intellectual and developmental disabilities, but who are also employable um, and who have goals for being competitively employed in the community. So while they're at Project Search, they're participating in you know classroom instruction with the teacher. Um, they're doing a lot of career exploration. They do a lot of hands-on training through their internships, and they actually get the opportunity to participate in three different job rotations. So, you know, they have some say, they share their interests and their goals for what it is they want to do. And we try to match them in um, a specific department within the hospital that aligns with that. But we also try to put them in situations where um, they're learning new skills or situations where they might have to be a little uncomfortable and adapt because we know that's the real world. So um, they're getting that classroom instruction in conjunction with the hands-on training um, and this is, this is a one-year program, but Michelle and Roy provide ongoing support. So after they've completed Project Search at RMC, we do work to find them competitive employment in the community um, close to where they live because we always have to take into consideration transportation and, and the family situation. But what's really important about Project Search and what I hope businesses really understand is that, um, you know, we train our interns 
very intensively, um, not just on the hands-on side of things and learning the skills, but also on the soft skills and the social skills aspects of being employed. Um, and we don't just release them, you know, to the lion's den. We, we definitely provide the ongoing training and support they need to transition from project search to complete competitive employment in the community. So there is some ongoing support that is gradually faded for our interns once they are actually working and they have completed the program. Um, but the goal of the program in general is just that is competitive employment. People with disabilities um, are disproportionately employed. It's about 18% of people with disabilities that um, want to work are actually competitively employed. So this program is very intensive. It is a year long and they, they are, they hit the ground running from the time they get there. Um, we do a boot camp in July, all the way until uh, May when they complete their graduation. Um, and they get some very intensive direct instruction and a lot of hands-on training. This is not just a Calhoun County program. This is an, actually an international program. Um, there are 632 program sites, 48 of which are in the United States, and the program expands across 10 countries. But you can see that we do have a number of sites um, and programs here in Alabama. Um, most of these sites partner with hospitals because regardless of the person's employment interests, you know, there's a department in a hospital that can um, focus on any number of skills. So for students who are interested in culinary careers, you know, all hospitals have cafeterias they can work in, they can learn cooking, they can learn kitchen safety skills. Um, some programs partner with other businesses, but mostly um, hospitals, medical centers um, around Alabama. Our closest, our closest neighbor is Gadsden, and we do a lot, of, a lot with them. We shadow them. We um, meet with them and have conversations about how we can make sure we're doing things um, to benefit our students and, and just get to compare what they're doing as well. So we currently have in our program in Calhoun County, seven students from Calhoun County schools. So they have graduated. Technically, they are still enrolled within Calhoun County School District. Um, students with intellectual disabilities, students with special education services can continue to receive special education services until they are 21. So they are technically still students, even though they never step foot on their home school campus. So we have seven from Calhoun County Schools. We have two students from Oxford City Schools. And then we have one student who uh, previously graduated from Anniston High School. So like I said, this is a transition program for students who have recently graduated high school. But we also have and have had in the past students who have graduated, taken a year or two to kind of figure out what it is they want to do. And then they come back and participate in the program. And um, it's the same thing. They're getting that direct instruction. They're getting that hands on experience. And then we support them in transitioning to community employment. Um, currently, our our interns are in different rotations in the sites that you see above. So we have students working in the cafeteria, environmental services, students working in floor tech and laundry services. Um, we have had a couple of students in the past and, and had one this year who was in security. We have students that work in the um, OT and PT um, offices at the Tyler Center. Students who are interested in technology can sometimes work within the information technology department, central supply, medical records, and patient transport. Although COVID has thrown a wrench in the patient contact aspect of this, um, of this program, we have been very limited in the number of job sites and rotations we've been able to secure for our students because we're trying to protect their, their health and make sure everybody is safe and working in a, as much of a COVID-free environment as possible in a hospital. But um, I will say at RMC, they have taken a lot of precautions to make sure our students are working safely. Um, they don't have access to those COVID units. They're not allowed to have direct um, contact with patients for the most part. So everybody's masked and everybody's safe. Um, looking at this table, this just gives you some data on um, our outcomes. Like I said, we started in 2017 with 10 interns. Only eight were able to complete the program, but all eight of those interns were um, successfully competitively employed once they completed the program. 2018, 2019 was a great year. 10 students enrolled in the program and completed and were also competitively employed. Um, you see our data kind of shift because of COVID, 2019, 2020, we had 11 students. 
we only had nine students complete the program. And then, like I said, COVID threw a wrench in a lot of, a lot of areas of our program, which um, caused our numbers to be a little bit lower, only six of those. And um, Michelle, this might be a little more, a little more promising now that um, these students have, have been able to secure jobs, but you know, in the year following only six were employed. And then last year in 2020, 2021 school year, we were on a hiatus. We were not able to um, secure the students needed to uh, run the program at RMC. So we did what we call community-based work training. And the students that would have been in RMC were getting job experience. It was just at different communities, uh, or I'm sorry, different businesses within the community. So, you know, 87% of the students who have enrolled in Project Search have completed the program. And even better, 89 9% of those who completed the program have um, secured and maintained competitive employment after having completed it. So, um, you know, there are a lot of positive aspects of this program, but really um, working to increase the number of students with intellectual disabilities that are gainfully employed is our mission, and we are absolutely succeeding in that, and we'll continue to do so. Um, Shannon, on the employment, I just wanted to add um, even though we only have six employed now, parents were concerned about their kids um, working with so much COVID. Mm -hmm. Those interns will not be forgotten about. When things lighten up and the parents are ready for the uh, kids to go to work, we will pick those back up and try to find employment for them. We didn't just desert them. And you know, that's something I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, we will go back and get the other three and get them employment and we will follow them for a year as well. Yeah, and I think to piggyback off that, Michelle, what's what I really want local businesses to understand because the purpose of us coming to the Chamber of Commerce and um, wanting to really promote our program is to make those partnerships. So when our students are looking for competitive employment, we have a variety of, of businesses to go to, uh, to make those connections and to get those students employed. I really wanna make sure we emphasize that there is that ongoing support. We know that, that our interns are gonna need a little assistance in transitioning to a new job. There might be some accommodations that have to be implemented and these skills instructors can come in, work with your students, um, support you in implementing those accommodations before trying to step out and allow the intern to work independently. But Michelle, you probably know more about this because you're the boots on the ground. You know, how, how, long, how many of those students actually need the year long job coaching when they're competitively employed? Um, very few, if any, have we had to follow for a year, but even, you know, after we've got them up and going, we will still come back and check on them at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. And if the business calls and says, hey, Michelle, um, Joe has this down pat and we would really like to train him to do this other job. Can you come back and help us? We go back in, we help them train Joe to do whatever they want him to do. Because a lot of, we want our interns to be helpful to their employees. We don't want them to be a hindrance. And a lot of times they take a little extra training. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're here for. And, you know, we were doing um, observations at the hospital last week, looking at our interns and their different job sites. Um, our students, our interns are so, uh, so well trained and have such good um, social skills, such good soft skills in general, but then also, you know, they're very determined to do well um, by the end because Michelle holds them to a very high standard, which is a good thing, Michelle. Um, but <laughs> we, we had people in the hospital stopping us from different departments saying, hey, where's my intern this year? I didn't get an intern. Um, why don't I have an intern? So I think that speaks to the quality of training they're getting from those skills instructors that people in the hospital are actually asking for our interns because they do such a great job and because they need the help. Um, so that's that's not just this year in COVID times because they they need all hands on deck. That's any year. People want our interns because they're the hardest working people in the hospital a lot of times. I mean, they want to do well because they know that um, 
they have to do well to get employed. You know, Michelle sets the bar high for them. Uh, our new teacher, Cynthia Russell, she has very high expectations as well. And um, we make it very well known to the students that you have to impress us before we continue to provide support in the community because we are not going to send you out if you're not prepared. So, um, you know, it's, it's very much um, a quality program and we are producing well-trained, very employable uh, potential employees. So um, we do have a number of businesses that have hired our employees. I'm sure many of these businesses are associated with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, maybe you have a business where you have one of our former employees, Home Depot, city, the City of Weaver, Jack's. Um, RMC hires a lot of our interns because they see them actually um, working in the hospital and are so impressed with what they're doing, they actually hire them on in the department where they're doing that rotation. Health and Human Services, the Peerless Grill, Pick and Save, Gadsden State Community College, the Hilton Garden Inn, Gadsden Regional Medical Center, Center Lineville Health and Rehabilitation, Jefferson's Legacy Village, Alexander's uh, The Great Events, and then Johnson's Giant Food. So you see a variety of businesses hiring our interns. Um, again, just because we are associated with the hospital does not mean that we are preparing our interns for a career in the medical field. We want to prepare them for whatever it is, whatever their goal is, and, and try to match them with a business and with an employment and with employment that aligns with their personal goals. So, um, you know, that can be any number of things. And, and a lot of times, you know, students get into an internship that they didn't think they'd be successful in and they fall in love with it and they get hired within that department or we find them a job that aligns with that or, you know, has similar skill sets and they're great at it. So um, you see there, we have a lot of businesses that hire our interns and we're always looking for more. So here are some, some pictures of our interns here. You see that we have some working in the cafeteria, um, some working with security, um, some that are working uh, in the, not so much directly with patients, but um, working in the occupational and physical therapy uh, section of the Tyler Center. Um, we have some that work with uh, stocking and central supply. So they do a number of different things. And this is just their first job rotation. They will go through two more, one in November. And then I think another one in January. Is that right, Michelle? Or it's, is it February? It's, it's February. January, I believe it's the first part of February. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So they have more rotations to come where they'll learn even more skills. So um, they are getting very intensive hands-on training. And what's great about this program is the training's not just coming from Michelle and Cynthia Russell, our teacher, or Roy, our other skills instructor. Um, you know, while the students are working during the day, which is usually from about 9.30 until 2.30, um, the skills instructors and the teachers are rotating between the students. So if there's correction, if there's teaching that's going on, it's just like it would be in an actual employment environment. They're getting that instruction from their mentors, from the people within their department. So um, they're learning all about communication. They're learning you know, skills specific to their job internships. Um, but I think more than anything, they, they really build a sense of confidence they've never experienced. Because no matter what you do, and I work in the school systems, no matter how um, great of simul you know, simulations you provide or um, school-based job sites you establish, it's nothing like actually working in um, an employment environment. Um, an actual community setting where people are working similar jobs. So they are trained, they are ready, they have the hands-on skills, they have the communication and soft skills necessary. Um, we, are just, we are just looking to get our, our mission and our uh, program out there so that more businesses understand the need for hiring people with disabilities, but also that um, there is ongoing support and that our interns are very well-trained. Um, so, you know, that is, that is Project Search in a nutshell. We used to, before COVID, offer um, tours if you wanted to come meet our interns, if you wanted to um, come see them in action and see some of the training they're getting, we did offer that. But right now that's on hold, unfortunately. Um, hopefully soon in the future. I don't know with this Delta variant going on, but um, we do have an open house that, um, that takes place in the spring. So, you know, we'll be getting that information out to uh, Linda at the Chamber of Commerce. So if you do wanna come and learn a little bit more about Project Search, you know, you're more than welcome to attend that. 
Um, and if you have any questions about our program, I don't think that I put our contact information on here, but I will get that to Ashley at the end of our training so that you can reach out to us with your questions. Um, I'm Shannon, also, I wanted to add, um, <clears throat> if we bring one of our interns into your business and you're unsure, we can do a trial. You don't have to actually have to go through all the paperwork of hiring them because um, I know that costs money to the business. Um, we can do like a two week trial and see if it works. Also, we do not put interns in positions that we think are not suitable for them. Just because the intern wants to do something, we work hard to figure out what they would be good at and can be happy at. And so we will not just put someone in your business that we don't think will succeed. And if there is issues, we will handle them. Mm -hmm. um, I am on call 24 hours a day. If you employ one of our interns and they end up working weekends or third shifts and there's a problem, you call me. If I can't get there, I'll get someone else there. I am always available to the businesses that hire our interns. And I think that's very important to support the business and let them know, you know, that we are there for them. And from the school end, you know, we, we scope out our students very carefully. We look at um, the students who, who can achieve um, independent or semi-independent employment. Um, you know, we, our goal is employment for as many students as possible, but we realize it's not necessarily um, attainable for all of our students. It's not realistic for all of our students, but we are very determined to make sure that those who have the potential who we feel would be um, successful uh, have the opportunity to participate in this program. So there is a pretty um, rigorous selection process, I guess, um, some stringent criteria that we look at before even accepting them into project search. So we wanna make sure that we are selecting students who, who have the need, number one, um, but also who have the potential and have the goal to be employed. Um, we, we consider families as well. We want to make sure families are supportive of the student and of the business and that they respect the businesses that we are putting our students with um, and who are hiring our students. We want to make sure that we are setting them up for success um, as much as possible. Uh, Michelle has been a godsend to a lot of these families because she's the job whisperer and then she also provides such great ongoing support. So, um, you know, she is a wonderful resource, a, wonder, a wonderful um person to have on speed dial if you're hiring our students and you feel like she said uncomfortable in any way she will provide that ongoing support for sure so let's see I'm going to check the chat I don't think we have any questions she says do you guys receive funding through the schools yes we do um, through the schools through Alabama Department of Rehabilitation um, as well as the Opportunity Center the schools um, Cowan County Schools funds the teacher that comes or yes, that funding comes from Calhoun County School. So she, we pay the teacher salary. Um, Alabama Department of Rehabilitative Services, they provide um, the interns uniforms. They wear scrubs. They are known at RMC for their red scrubs. Um, and then if there's anything specific that the student needs, like um, let's say slip resistant shoes, or um, I'm trying to think of other specific examples, Michelle, if you can think of one hey, specific um, to that job. Heard, if they, and when they supply what they need, like they're supplying us with masks and stuff, mm -hmm. but also when the intern is ready to go to work, they supply them with two sets of clothing. And when I say that, I mean belt, socks, underwear, pants, shoes, shirt, whatever is needed for that job. They get two sets or, you know, two of each. Um, ADRS also funds Roy and myself through the Opportunity Center. The Opportunity Center is our boss and that's who we answer to, but ADRS supplies the funds for us to be able to be employed. Now, as far as the things, the extra things we do for the kids, we do that through fundraisers. Um, we like to reward them if they've had good weeks or, you know, all 
lately it's if we didn't take our mask off all day. They got biscuits this week for that. Um, but we like to do donuts, biscuits, order pizzas. Um, in between rotations, we have them in the classroom for a week, um, working on some um, different skills. And we like to, you know, have a pizzas and stuff like that. And we do that through fundraisers. And we've got several things going on right now. So um, maybe we can get that to Ashley and she can get that um, out for you. We are um, looking at a Facebook silent auction. We had hoped to kick it off by the end of September, but it looks like we may have to push it to November because a lot of things have been going on. But um, we would love all your support in that as well. Yes, great question. Um, anything else that we can answer? I no, think I guess we could we don't talk all day. No, you're fine. I'll say we don't have any other questions. Um, I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up. But is there anything else you guys would like to speak up? If you do have those events, absolutely send them to me and um, we can add those to our community calendar. That won't be a problem. At all. I don't know if y'all can, I don't know if they can. Well, I'm going to drop everything in the floor trying to get it. We are making, are they showing up? Can y'all see them? Hold them up higher. We're Lanyard. making oh. um, lanyards um, and selling those for $5 a piece. They have the clip and the little round hook because, you know, some people's badges do different things. And also because we do work in a hospital facility, um, and I was hoping to sell some to them. We have the breakaway. Well, it's going to break away. There we go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just comes unclipped if you're in the medical field and need something like that. But if you don't, it also has it. And we're selling those right now for $5. So if anybody would like one of those, um, please let us know. And they're made by the students. That's important too. Yes. So we're doing Alabama and Auburn. And we're trying to do some of the school systems, but also they're just doing random ones. And as hard as it is for me, I'm letting them do them by themselves, even if they don't match. So just know if you say you want a random one, it may or may not go together, but they made it and they made it with love. And that's all that matters. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ashley, for having us. And we'll get you know any dates for any specific um, events that we're doing to you. Um, but we appreciate your time and we're looking forward to, um, you know, any feedback we get from the community about this, because this is, this is a, a relatively new program, but this is really the first year. I think we've put a lot of energy into, to making the word known across all account, Calhoun County. I got you. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for joining us too. Um, also our attendees, or if you're watching this a little bit later, um, yeah, I appreciate you speaking to us and. If you, like you said, if you had, if you want to have a little write up on those, uh, the necklaces, I can put those in the description for the video too, and who to contact if they want to purchase one. I can put that in there for you. It will be a prank. Right. All right. right. Well, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're very have welcome. Good afternoon. Yes. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.